So my name's Sean Ross Smith and I'm the director of the MATE Bystander Program at Griffith University. COVID-19 took everyone by surprise and what we have found is that some organisations have some great policy that really supports this and others don't. So the first thing I'd suggest is making sure that your policy is, is really robust as an organisation. A lot of times people say, How, what do we look out for and then what do we discuss? And I say, talk to your entire team about domestic violence. So focus in there, in a, in a webinar forum or a little bit like this within your team. So from working with victims and the victims and survivors for such a long time, they will say that knowing that your employer genuinely cares, they're not doing it to tick a box, they're not doing it because it's good governance, they're doing it because they genuinely care is really important. Share this with your um, friends and family, share this with the people in your sphere because that's getting the word out there to victim, to potential victims and or perpetrators that you, you know, you're taking this seriously, you know what supports are available um, and the message is clear, but it's not so one-on-one. -on -one. I know a lot of people have said that, that what happens if you do think someone's experiencing it and it's during COVID. And again, I would say it's very difficult to ask a one-on-one -on -one question because the perpetrator could be in that same room. If if the the team leader or the supervisor or the manager or someone sends out an email with all of that domestic violence information, they can also say quite discreetly in that email, because don't forget emails can also be monitored, but they can also say, if at any point in time you're experiencing this and you want my help, um, you know, put your hand like that, put your hand like this, put your hands like that during a webinar and that tells me what support you need from me. Also in my team, I check in with everyone about stuff, other things in their life. So oftentimes domestic violence question isn't, are you experiencing domestic violence? Oftentimes it's, what are you finding really challenging about being at home? How are you finding renegotiating tasks in your home? Um, who, who are the support people in your life that you get to see at the moment? Who are the people that you can't see that you would really love to see right now? Those are really invaluable DV questions because they're gonna tell you things like like whether that person feels isolated, um, whether they've got support and help around them or whether they don't, um, whether they have access to money or they don't. Those are really good questions to ask. Where you can tell someone or reassure someone that their employment is safe, please do that. We need to make sure that for people um, where their workplace is their safest place that they can still work from there or from elsewhere. Um, you don't need to know the reasons why. If someone comes to you and says, look, I really need to go to work, I really need to work from the workplace, I, we shouldn't be asking the why. We should recognise that those people may not want to tell you why, but that may be the only safe place for them. It's never your role as a bystander to do everything for everyone. It's your it's your role to recognise what's going on, to, to respond accordingly by doing everything we've just described and then referring those people to expert services. So even as much as I work in this space, I'll still never consider myself an expert and I would never do a risk assessment on anyone or um, I will always leave that to experts. I'll always talk to people about referring to an expert agency. Domestic violence is 100% preventable. It's 100% preventable. It takes all of us speaking up. And like I always say, it sh our messages should be of help and support to a victim or perpetrator, uh, a victim or survivor, and a message of accountability to perpetrators. So if you have anyone in your team that you also feel is perpetrating violence, or maybe perpetrating violence, referring them again, having the same conversations with them, is everything okay for you? You know, how are you getting through your day? What's most challenging for you? Are incredibly important conversations that we all need to be having.